Michal Wash Jakubu. Now we have this crazy idea because in the eighties we remember in Piemonte you have the Ballad of Boys. You can tell we have boys, so we want to make ourselves uh, one to teach the boys. The, the new style uh, teaching one boys. I want teaching boys. That's, yeah, new style. That's a little bit long, but that's fine. So today we're here to present you a very um, unique wine, and you probably never heard about. It. And it's made from. It's made from a grape variety typical from North East, North East Italy. The variety is Raboso Friulano. I and want to, I want to change that. Yeah. Okay, pronunciation is always difficult for me. Uh, Raboso Friulano. Try again, man. Raboso Friulano. <laughs> oh, I give you another shot. Raboso Friulano. That's the way. Almost, almost there. Yeah. But you got another chance to name the style of this wine that is Bagnoli Friulano. Bagnoli Friulano. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's actually easier. Uh, so this wine, <laughs> it's uh, made from red grape and into um, white sparkling, so it's called... Blanc de Noir. That's so big, you know, I always tease the Italian. Blanc de Noir, it's, it's French, it's that's not it's Italian. It's, it's international, so in... it's Blanc de Noir. <laughs> In Italian, it's called Bianco di Lello. <laughs> That's not true. Right? It's a Bianco di Lello, just, just for the record. It's definitely not Bianco okay. di Lello. Scusate, vi saluto. Bianca Nera. Ah, ciao, ciao. Ciao, Franco. Ciao, Franco. Bianco di Lella. Okay. No, that's Bianco Lella, that's another fit. Anyways, my colleague just corrected me and he's leaving. This grape writer is famous for its acidity. That's the reason why they actually have to harvest this grape in, like, in early August. Actually, is this grape variety is so late uh, ripening mm -hmm. that usually for red wine is harvested in the middle of November. To make it sparkling is harvested in the middle or end of the October, it depends on the vintage. Tell me. Yeah, October. You tell me the wine is mixed with two vintages? Yeah, that's made from two vintages, just because the acidity is very, very high, so to smooth the acidity, the acidity is blended from with the previous one vintage. And also to soften the acidity they have under, undergone the malonatic fermentation to sort of uh, reduce uh, acidity. And okay, aging for the base one. Then it's been um, aged in bottle for four years, and it's been yeah for pretty much ten. It's, it's four years after the disgorgement. This one, yeah, yeah. That's it's kind of nice. It's been disgorged in 2014, and so it's like six years, seven years already. And still, you know, you I think that uh, this is very, very unique. So when we talk about Italian wine, we talk about a lot of variety. This is something very, very particular to talk about. Yeah, and if you talk about sparkling wine, you certainly um, just bring up from Jacotta Prosecco those famous categories, and this, this certainly is one of the uh, less alone. And I think it deserves some sort of uh, attention. Yeah, I think uh, this could be a thing. That I think this wine, after the, we're gonna taste it, but it's definitely very good for Italian food, especially with fried or really really fat things like cured meat or and then maybe some cheese too. Yeah, yeah, the acidity is so pronounced and you know you can all also it pairs very well with <coughs> this uh, sweet sensation on nose and it's like sweet almond and then it's like sweet peaches. Yeah and there is an amazing I think Brioche aroma. Like. Brioche again. <laughs> again brioche. I know that you <laughs> brioche is so French. It's Coledo. No, that's why if I say it's brioche, it's croissant. It's not brioche. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, anyways, so the vineyard is called the Vignata. Vignata is the winery, actually. As in the vineyard, the winery is from Coliogani, so we are in Padova area, in mm -hmm. Minuto. Mm -hmm. In Padova, do you know what, what we have in Padova? In Padova, we have one of the best medicine schools in Italy. That. I think so, you know. I don't know. Anyways, that's not important. That's, that's not even relevant. Um, no, that's not. <laughs> I heard you, puppy. Yeah, that's so, yeah, that area is normally, you know, you get more uh, sparkling ones like Prosecco, and it's not far away from the uh, Coriano, uh, what the Piadre. Yeah, it's music, really you know? close. And, uh, yeah. In fact, this variety is coming really, really, really 
um, difficult to find because producer planted prosecco instead of uh, rose or post that's, yeah. that's a convenient. That's a shame, you know. Yeah, that's in order to make it's money, convenient. people just uh, get rid of all the food varieties. And this guy is Chinese. Yeah. I'll tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> so you wonder why we know so much about Italian wine, right? No, he's Italian, I'm, I'm not Italian, I'm telling you the secrets. We know so much because we have this little book. And we wrote this and you should buy it on Amazon in Kindle version or you should order it because you know, yeah. it's always better than a it's, book. It's for all the beginners who would love to know a little bit about Italian wine. If you already in the wine business and you want to know more, we have another book for you. The Italian when unplugged. So certainly we don't write this book, but we want to recommend this book to you because it's uh, well written and uh, has lots of information. And lots of information about every grape variety you can find. It. It's it's amazing. It's something that really, really, really can surprise you. Okay. So cheers. Cheers. See you next time. See you next time.